Welcome to the new moon in Sagittarius. Today, we are rewriting the official story that we're born to live. So your life's purpose. What I want everybody to do is I want you to put in the comments if over the last few weeks or months, you've discovered your life purpose. And if you have, what is it? I want you to put that in the comments. If you've discovered your life purpose over the last few months, and what is it? Put that in the comments, let me know. And I'd love to see your answers. For me, I've had a big shift in my understanding of myself, what I want moving forward with my life. And now is an opportunity to write a new narrative. So it's an extremely exciting time to be alive. Um, the world is going through a massive shift right now and you get to be a part of that. And you get to write the story and the role and the person that you wanna be in this new world that's coming. So put it in the comments, let me know. Um, we're gonna do a movement together just to kind of get warmed up. It is early in the morning. We're now in Lions Bay, Canada. So we're back where we started, the mission. Um, so we're gonna do one quick movement, just get the body moving a little bit. Um, so I want you to just move your arms, cross your body. You can actually tap your sides. You'll feel the energy and the electricity buzz in your hands as you start to do this. Warm up, good. This wakes up the kidneys, wakes up the fascia, the lungs. Okay, shake it off. Just shake your hands. I like to do this when I wanna just charge them. When you move your body, your body heals itself. It creates electricity. Hey, Aisha. Let's see if I can pull her live. Aisha, request to go live. Oh no, your private account, you can't. Huh. I didn't get to say good morning to her yet, so. Anxious these days. Yeah, there's a lot of energy, especially in the heart. Oh, hello. Hi. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Hina. I'm from South Africa. Oh, wow. So am I. <laughs> I'm, okay. from I'm from Johannesburg. Okay, okay. So yeah. we're in the same area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't been there in a long time. But... Oh, okay, you don't stay here anymore, okay. No, I, I was born in, in Johannesburg and I moved to Canada when I was uh, five, six, and I've only been back once, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm originally from India, I'm married and I'm living for 17 years here. Oh, wow, okay. And when's your birthday? 8th of October. Okay, Libra, very good. And, and what brings you up today? Uh, I've been following uh, Human Garage, the app, all the time on Instagram. And I've been having my shoulder issue, like very intense, like well, like yesterday was raining, so my whole shoulder like hurting from here. And it's pulled from my neck to going up. So I've been just watching YouTube of all the videos of from your people and doing exercise. So it just happened that I just walked in and I saw that you're live and I joined <laughs> Yeah. And uh, sorry, I have a lupus too, so. Okay. And um, what I'm feeling when talking to you is there's feelings that aren't being expressed. And it's either uh, to your, your mom or your feminine side or your spiritual side. Um, that's what I'm feeling. Does that resonate with you? Say again, say again. Okay. It feels to me like you're not expressing your feelings to somebody or your needs. Does that resonate? Yes, that's true. that's true. Is it related with your feminine side or your mom? Or where where is that showing up in your life? I guess both sides. Mm-hmm. So that's being held in your body right now. 
Okay. When, when we have emotions, um, they're supposed to move through our body. Like if you see kids, what do kids do when they get emotional? They kick, they scream, they move, they shake, they run around, they go, they go crazy, right? Or they express. Okay. They express okay. until a day that they no longer feel safe to express. And so, so somehow, somewhere in your life, that's getting trapped in your body. There's an emotion and you're not expressing how you feel or what you need. And that is landing in your body. So we can do movements, fascial maneuvers, that reduce the stress in different areas of your body so that you can start to process those emotions naturally through movement. However, if we take away the pain and we move through it, there's still the origin of it. And that origin needs to be addressed at some point. So would you like to do a movement together to help? Yes. Okay, let's do it. So uh, if you could put your phone down, We'll do a couple just because there's a few things connected there. And, uh, and we'll, we'll start with this one, okay? So this one, we pull the ears. And the reason why we pull the ears is because the ears, they are a fascial connection to the head. And when I grab it and I twist it and I pull my ear, I'm actually pulling all the fascia on the neck, the jaw, the mm -hmm. forehead, and the side of the head, okay? And uh, it usually it hurts some people a little bit, or they're, they're sensitive there because they have so much tension. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this one together. We'll do uh, one ear at a time. So it's on your left side. Is that right? The pain? Right, right, right. Right, right. right. Oh, okay. Your, your Instagram's mirrored. So we'll do, <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it the other way. So grab your uh, left hand, grab the top of your right ear. Right hand, grab the bottom of the ear. Now you're gonna twist the bottom forward and the top backwards. Like twist the ear really tight. It might hurt a little bit, that's okay. And then open your mouth a couple times slowly. And then you can just slowly move around. Like fine, just move. Honestly, slowly move different directions. There's no, there's no, perfect formula for it. Okay. Shake off your hands. Okay. And how does that feel? It's half of my shoulder because currently it's pulling so much and it helped. I could feel a little bit relaxed. Okay, good. So that's just one movement. We're going to do a few. So the next one, what I want you to do is take your left hand. You're going to place it under your armpit. Now, pull the skin down on your armpit and hold it there. And then you're going to slowly raise your right hand up. So you're really stretching the skin down and then you're raising your arm up against it. Now just move around a little bit and breathe. I call this one the stinky armpit. <laughs> Move around, keep breathing. You can extend your arm too. You should feel a good stretch between your armpit and your arm. Ooh. Okay, shake it off. I can't express how, how relaxed I'm feeling. It just coincided that I'm having a chat with you here. I don't know how to explain. Yeah. Yeah, these movements are very powerful, and especially when we do it together. Um, we, weren't, we weren't trained to understand our body. We were programmed into uh, not And so what we're doing here is the body's a computer. When we do certain things to a computer, we get a response. It's the same thing. If we move something in a certain way or say certain things or breathe in a certain way, the body has a response. All we've done is we've found the way to reprogram the body. 
And that's what the maneuvers are. So with the five fundamental laws of reprogramming fascia, you can actually adapt. Mm -hmm. So you can say, I have a shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what are the what are the fundamental things that make a fascia maneuver? Apply all of those things and it will work. Okay, so let's do another one. We'll do, you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna place it on your shoulder there, trap. And then your left hand is gonna go on the elbow. Twist the skin outwards or inward. I want you to feel which way has more tension. So go right on the elbow and you're gonna- So you turn inward, right? Yeah, so, so the way to do it is feel which way has more tension. For me, if I go out, I have more tension than if I go in. So when I go outward, it's pulling this side. Yeah. And I, if I do this, also pull this side, but when I do it this side, it feels more intense. Yeah, so go out. Yeah, go that way. And then really twist it and then lift it above your head. And move around slowly and breathe. And relax. Ooh. Shake it off. Did you just check the door for mommy? Hmm. How's that feel? Good. Okay, let's go to the throat, so the thyroid. So place your right hand just on the front. One second. Mm. Sorry again, your name. My name is Jason. Game. Jason, yeah. Jason. So yeah. I know I just joined it without seeing the time and that. Is it possible I can join again? Because I do work as a beautician. And my client just walked in. Okay. So I have to see them. Sorry. Sure. I was really enjoying I really don't want to go, but I had to see them. That's okay. Uh, I go live every Tuesday and Thursday. And you can also go to our YouTube channel and all these movements are there. Okay. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact, I'm going to forward you my number. And if we can have a chat, I would like to have a chat with you. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. It was nice to meet you. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Huh. That's always fun. So uh, one of the things that I, I didn't want to get too much into because there was a lot of talking um, when we're doing movements, but when we're working with our computer or our body, there's certain things that we can do to create a result. And we found that when you pin and lock the fascia, so like we did with the armpit, we pin stretch lock you breathe you move slowly and you counter rotate with the intention of releasing your fascia releasing your emotions looking moving feeling younger and then you go for a walk that's how you reprogram the body Okay, so let's do the other side for everybody who was participating. I don't want to leave everybody unbalanced. So we'll take the right hand. You're going to go on the left ear. Left hand, you're going to grab the bottom of the ear. Pull the bottom forwards and the top backwards. Twist your ear, like really twist it. Might hurt a little bit. So here we are, we're pinning and locking, pinning, stretching and locking the fascia in the ear. Now we're gonna slowly move in rotations. Breathe. With the intention of releasing all the restriction, emotions, pain, trauma, stress in your head, your neck, your jaw, your fascia. Okay. Ooh. Shake it off, shake off your hands. Okay, let's do this stinky armpit on the other side. <laughs> so grab, take your right hand, grab the skin under your armpit. You're gonna pin it, stretch it, lock it. So pull, that, pull the skin down. Lift, 
the left arm up. Now slowly move around in rotation and breathe. Lift the arm up, move it around, stretch it. And relax. Okay, shake off your hands. Ooh, I can feel the uh, my skin getting itchy. That's good. If your skin gets itchy, warm, hot, tingly, buzzy, um, that's usually a good sign. Okay, now let's do the left arm. Place it on the trap here. Right hand, you're gonna grab the elbow, turn into the tension, create that rotation. Pin, stretch, lock. Move, slowly breathe. Okay, shake it off. I should feel a bit more balanced now. All uh, right, now because she was working through expressing her emotions, this is a really common one, and, and it usually starts when you're young. If you get bullied or you say something wrong and then you feel embarrassed or you do something or someone does something to you and you try to express yourself and they shut you down or your mom or dad gets angry or your coach or your teacher or your friend or whatever that follows you into how you express as you grow up and as you get older. Now that gets trapped as a pattern that can continually brings emotions and traps them in the body. So every time that someone does something that bothers me, I get scared. I don't express that feeling gets held in my body. That feeling then builds as it builds. It creates more stress, tension, and then disease. So, what we're going to do for that one and what I was going to do with her was to open up the thyroid and the throat and the neck area with a quick little release and some affirmations to reprogram the body to feel safe when expressing. So you can use affirmations to tell the body something and you might not believe it yet. Your body doesn't care. Your body in the subconscious hears those words, hears the tone, hears the frequency, and that frequency of your words reprograms your body over time to believe it. Even though if your ego and your brain doesn't believe it right now in this moment, that's okay. So take your right hand, you're gonna place it right on the front of your throat, left hand on the back of the neck. Hold your hands here for a moment. Breathe in through the mouth. Two. Three. Breathe in through the nose. Two. Three. Repeat after me. I will express my feelings, thoughts, and emotions even when it's inconvenient, even when I'm scared. Even when it's uncomfortable, I will express myself. I no longer want to hold these emotions in my body. I will share my boundaries with others. I will share my feelings with others. I'm safe to express myself. Breathe in through the nose and let it out. I release these emotions that have been held in my body Breathe in. One more time. Whew. 
shake off your hands. You might feel a little lightheaded, lighter, calmer, emotional. It's all okay. When I learned to express myself, even when it was inconvenient, uncomfortable, scary, my life changed because every time someone did something that bothered me and I was able to express myself in that moment, it allowed them to understand me. And as they understand me more, they know how to um, work with me as a friend, a family member, a partner, an acquaintance, whoever it might be. I need to express my boundaries so that they can understand the edges of how I operate. And then they can choose to act upon those boundaries. But if they don't know my boundaries, they might do things that, are bo that bother me, but they don't know that it's bothering me. And that's not fair. So I walk away with all the emotions frustrated, holding them in my body, and they walk away confused, not understanding if they did something right or wrong. So learning to express myself, even when it was uncomfortable, even when I was scared, even when I felt like it might hurt someone else's feelings or hurt my relationship with someone, it actually hurt me more when I didn't do it because it built up. And that buildup led to either me disconnecting emotionally from that person or running away from the relationship or a big fight at some point. So learning to express yourself, it's uncomfortable. Uh, sometimes you have to start with somebody who you feel safe with and then you build confidence and then you can do it with other people. And it's, it's, it doesn't go from zero to a hundred sometimes. Sometimes it takes a couple trial and errors. Sometimes you fall over when you do it. When you do it, you actually get, uh, to relive the trauma. Maybe the person didn't like it. They don't want to be friends with you anymore. Just like when you were a kid, but that's okay because you're learning a lesson. And that lesson is to express your boundaries, your feelings, your thoughts and emotions with others so that you feel understood and so that others can connect with you on a deeper level. And if you don't express, then people don't really know you. They don't know who you are and they don't know how to help you. And that's really, what I've learned in the last few years of expressing myself, the damage of not doing it to my body, to my relationships has been uh, much more than I would like it to be. And I want you all to also feel confident and safe to express yourself. And that's really what we're working on in this community. And again, it, it comes in layers. Sometimes you feel safe and then sometimes you don't. And sometimes you express and sometimes you don't. And when you, now when I don't, I walk away knowing the impact and that, that builds enough emotion in me to actually step up and do it. So um, hope you all had a good release there from the thyroid, throat, um, speaking your truth. And it's a really powerful maneuver that you can do if you feel like you're not expressing yourself throughout the day. All right. Is anybody feeling the new moon energy? I'm curious. Put it in the comments, everybody's quiet today. Tuesdays, people are always quiet. No. So right now, I, uh, I'm very happy. Uh, we're in Vancouver. And I'm happy because we have our cacao back. So uh, the company that we use to supply us with cacao, our raw cacao, I have it every morning instead of coffee. Um, because it has, it's an extremely high antioxidant, has high iron, magnesium, calcium, and uh, it stimulates uh, positivity and enhances your mood, enhances your energy. So I'm happy because we're back in Vancouver and they ship to us. So if you want to check out the company we use, you can find them on our website, Shop Partners. And it's called Cacao with a K, K-A-K-A-O. And the one that I like, and the reason why I like it, I'll tell you in a second. The one that I like is the Guatemala Signature Blend. And what they put in there is raw organic cacao bean that does not have mold, does not have pesticides or herbicides or GMOs. And they mix it with vanilla bean, panela, and chili. And the combination, like I don't have to add anything to it. It opens up my heart, gives me lots of energy. I feel focused. I feel more connected to others because I'm releasing feel good hormones when I drink it. So 
Um, when we got to Mexico, can't, we haven't been able to find one. I mean, there's, there's a couple, we've tried probably 10 or 15 different brands in Mexico because we can't get this one there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we could not find one that was this good. So I don't usually talk about a lot of products, um, but things that I use every day, um, the reason why I use them, I think is really valuable to share with others because it's made a big difference on my life. Opening up my heart, getting more energy, waking up, uh, feeling more connected to myself, uh, feeling more focused. Cacao, cacao, cacao. Uh, it's really good. Um, and yeah, it can start to supplement your morning coffee because coffee shakes energy out of your body. You use uh, hormonal energy and then there's a crash. And uh, there's other benefits to coffee that, that people like, such as grounding. Um, but cacao is also from a bean in the ground and uh, on trees, I think. I think it's on trees. But the, it's a very grounding, grounding drink. Okay. I wish I could order, but I'm in Japan. Yeah, honestly, just try a bunch of different companies. Coffee makes you feel agitated. Depends. Um, for me, I can't drink it anymore. I haven't had it in almost three years, but it depends. If you're drinking coffee with mold, um, you will shake. If you drink coffee with uh, herbicides and pesticides, you get headaches. So... Uh, one is shaking in the body, one is shaking in your head, like anxious thoughts uh, and racing thoughts. I'm not sure which one, though. I can't remember if mold, I think mold creates shaking in the hands and the body, whereas the pesticides cause racing thoughts and the herbicides. And there's something about drinking like a warm beverage in the morning. It's actually good to build a habit in the morning. There's certain times of the day and certain things that you want to build a routine upon. And that's usually food, sleep, and movement. If you make those consistent throughout a day, then you have the ability to be more variable in other parts. Birdseed artist in Japan. Ooh, let's see if I can bring you up. By the way, we're, um, oh, here we go. Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, this is a surprise. <laughs> nice to see you. When's your, where are you from and when's your birthday? Um, I'm in Japan. Um, my birthday is November 16th, so I'm a Scorpio. You have an accent. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in Australia. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was Australia. And, uh, <laughs> and sorry, your birthday was when? Uh, November 16th. Wow. Okay, Scorpio, and uh, and what's your name? Oh, I'm Haruka. Okay, nice to meet you. What brings you up today? Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I <laughs> I have a couple of questions. I don't know which one to ask, but um, yeah, you were talking about. I think you were talking about energies before, and it yeah, like. Um, I think I'm very sensitive to energies and I'm not very good at releasing them. So, um, for example, like yesterday I met someone and it was the first time to meet this person and I, I felt so drained <laughs> afterwards and I didn't know how to get back. Um, and it took me a really long time to kind of feel okay <laughs> sure. um so i don't know if it if it's a sensitivity thing or if it's a if it's trying to tell me something or if it's a reflection of what i have within me i yeah i can't figure these things out myself mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> well you can because you gave some really good suggestions um what do you feel like it's teaching you i don't know <laughs> Okay. So let's well, take I, Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, I did kind of wonder if it was kind of more like a message. So I've been, now I'm in Kyoto. It's a city um, sort of, yeah, it's a city in Japan. And I've been feeling that maybe it's, it's time to move to a different place. 
and I felt, oh, maybe this is kind of a message saying, you know, it's time to go to a different place or look for other locations. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. How long have you had that feeling of looking for another place? Uh, quite a while, actually. Maybe, I don't know, six, six months or so. Mm -hmm. And so when we started today's live, I brought up how the new story is coming in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard that part, yes. Yeah. So you're feeling and looking at taking action on that feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a great question. And we get this one a lot. And there's a lot of layers to it. Like it's not, it's not so black and white. It's not, yeah. there's, there's many layers. Let's start with one layer for a moment. So here we are, I'm in an inter interaction with somebody. I leave that interaction and I feel drained. Okay, my question is, did I set adequate boundaries? Was it good for the first 20 minutes and then I started to get tired but I didn't express myself and leave? Or did I not wanna be rude and I stayed? And then I stayed so long that it actually drained me because I no longer had enough energy to interact. I've had that before, right? Where, you're, where you, you don't wanna be rude, so you hang out longer and then you leave and you're resentful and tired and exhausted and then angry. And, uh, and so that's, one, that's just one pathway or one thing that can come out of an interaction like that. And what is that teaching me? Well, it's teaching me to, uh, to choose myself over others, to actually care for my body. Because if me and my body are telling me that I've been satiated from this interaction and I don't take action on that, I feel the consequence so that I learn to take action on taking care of my body. The yeah, other I one mean, is, oh, yeah, usually I would just make an excuse and leave the mm -hmm. leave. But um, yesterday I had a job interview. <laughs> So I had to kind of sit with this person for about an hour. <laughs> right. So you had a job interview and you left the job interview feeling drained. So the question is, what does that mean? You get to choose what that means to you. I'm just asking questions and you don't necessarily have to answer them right now. But the question is, is what about... Is there something about that job that you're now getting a sign or signal about? Is, is it something that truly lights you up? Is that a job that you really want to be a part of? Because if I walked away from a job interview, I want to be like skipping down the road and like mm -hmm. laughing and, and super happy. But here I am, the first interaction with this company or this organization, and I feel drained. Is that a sign to me? I get to choose. If I want to say that's a sign for me to not take this role, or I can create another narrative. It's the new moon. It's the energy. It was the person. You, you get to pick that. But the, the, way to, the way to find the answer is to ask yourself the question. And when you ask yourself the question and you just give your your, yourself time and space, the answer will show up on your doorstep. And what I find is a lot of the time, I don't ask myself the question. And, or I try and find the answer. It doesn't work that way. I ask the question, I walk away from it, detach, and then all of a sudden, the next day, I get a sign and uh, it tells me the answer. You know, yeah. Exactly. Nobody can tell me because have you, ever, have you ever gone to someone for advice and then they give you like five different stories of what, what you should do and it's like none of that resonates. The best yes. way to do it is for you to come to the conclusion on your own. What I can do is I can give you 10 different narratives right now and one of them is going to resonate more and then you grab that one and then you you tell that one over and over again but it doesn't have to be that way what you can do is ask yourself the question walk away from it and then the next day or a couple days later or a week later or a month later or a year later your answer will hit you and it will be so clear that you can't miss it yeah yeah i i just realized that i was kind of seeking an answer right away i'm like why why what is this mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah wow that's that's really good to hear yeah yeah so I, I i think of the universe like this when when i okay nature is a very good teacher if you're in nature a lot you'll learn a lot 
And so we have a squirrel here and he, you know, oh, his wow. name is Jimmy and he comes and he, he, he'll run in the house. He'll come say hi and then he'll run out. Oh, that's and, so cute. Um, <laughs> it didn't start that way. Mm-hmm. And at first I was so excited. I want, cause I love nature. I love animals. I wanted to connect and like say hi to him. And mm-hmm. that did not work because it was, I was pushing, you know, I was too aggressive in my approach to, yeah. from his perception. My energy was too imposing. So mm-hmm. instead I was patient, calm, waited, unattached to the outcome, but mm-hmm. I wanted to build a relationship with this animal because we're yeah. nature, we don't have pets here. So anyways, with patience and with time and without pushing, all of a sudden he started to come closer and closer and closer. And mm-hmm. now he comes in all the time. And, oh, wow. and so, I use that to understand how the universe works in the sense that if I'm constantly looking for something, mm-hmm. by default, I'm pushing away the one that's in the most alignment with me. It's called oh. law of attraction for a reason. Mm-hmm. Law of attract means I'm the magnet to the experience. So I decide what I want, I put it out there like a, like a beacon. And then I attract options. I don't chase options. If I chase options, usually that option runs away or I run into resistance or I get hit on the head. And it's like wrong direction. You're forcing, you're too impatient. Yeah. And this is actually one of the things that I just learned, not learned, but I had a new layer of understanding on. I've been working on certain things for the last four years in the human garage organization, Mm -hmm. building like building a machine to reach all these people. We have a very small team, like up until mm-hmm. earlier this year, we only had like five people. Now we have really? like, now we wow, have like, that's amazing. Yeah. And now we have like maybe nine or 10. And so we're, we are very oh, small, okay. but yes, yes. in order to do that, we need to have the systems and the processes and the skills mm-hmm. and the strategy and everything to make that work. So yes. for the past four years, I have been working endlessly to train myself to learn things to implement systems to find ways so that we can grow Mm -hmm. and um, earlier in december 17th last year we shared our vision Mm -hmm. and our vision party you can see it on our youtube channel it's like an hour long but we actually talk about our mission and our vision well that was us telling the universe what we want Mm -hmm. and over the next year options will attract based on the beacon we sent out so we said we want this and all of a sudden all these people started reaching out all we found all these apps that help us do the things that we said we were going to do um, we found a clothing brand that does organic t-shirts we like got a manufacturer naturally. exactly it's just it attracted to us like we wanted to do um worldwide shipping because you know you can't ship into certain countries like it's literally impossible mm. well we did uh at the beginning of the year, we attracted somebody who came into our programs and asked to do distribution for us in the United States. So now we have a Canadian distributor, we have a United States one. That's not worldwide yet, but that's the start of it. And so we put the beacon out and we're patient, just waiting. And then all of a sudden someone comes to our programs, offers to help. Mm -hmm. And, And so the beacon that I put out, people tend to either not do it or they tend to put out such a small one that they don't even notice when it comes because it's oh, so small. Yes, yes. That's why setting extremely high goals mm-hmm. is important because if you set an extremely high goal, but you're patient enough for it, eventually you'll get at least 80%. And, mm-hmm. and this has really been the, the, uh, the process for us. So we put out our vision. Over the next year, we met all the people, found all the resources. Uh, I found all the learning experiences to embody that vision. And Mm -hmm. we've gotten 90% of the things that we said that we were going to do last year. Wow. Which means means that we didn't aim high enough, right? Because people overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And so if you aim really high and you only get 80% of high, you're still going to get pretty high. And that's what I've learned. So, um, put the put the question out there. Put what you want out there. Let the attractions come in. Be patient for the attractions, but also unattached to 
unattached to them. Because you might get option one attracts, you realize that option one is not the right one, but it was giving you more clarity on what the right one is. Mm -hmm. Now you can send a new beacon out. Because mm -hmm. if I say a uh, simple one, I want a car, okay, I, someone drives past me, they have a number on the back of the car, car for sale, right? But it's not a car I want. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I want an SUV. Okay, great. Now my friend is selling their SUV, but it's for $20,000 and it's like, well, oh man, I don't have $20,000. So I want an SUV that's gonna be $10,000. So I'm sending a new beacon out after I lost of the track different options. Those, those, those first options were just giving me more clarity on the beacon that I wanna send out. Oh, Once okay. I send out a very clear message of what I want, then, the, then I'm going to attract things that are only in alignment with that message, which depending on what it is, can take years. Mm -hmm. Depends how big it is. Yeah. Do you also feel that we should, like after setting these intentions, do you feel that it's also in, um, important for us to kind of work on that on a daily basis or be kind of active and not. I mean, <laughs> the answer is yes. Focused intention over time wins with action. Where, where people sometimes they just go beacon, 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 but there's no actions. Mm -hmm. So there still has to be actions, like mm -hmm. focused actions and intentions over time will get to the end result. Like if I want to look younger, right? and I just send a beacon out, I wanna be younger, and then an, a, then an option comes, and it's like, here's how to make your face look younger. <laughs> and I don't, I don't take action on it. Then yeah. the beacon's still there, but I'm not actually taking action on the opportunity that I attracted. Okay, That's next, next one. Now I get a supplement, and this supplement is gonna make you 10 years younger if you take it every day. I can't afford that. And then it's, you know, so you've just got this message and this intention, but there's no actions to match it. So the matching of the actions has to come in in order for it to work. Mm. That's where people just wish and wish and wish and wish and wish and wish, but they're not doing anything that's in alignment with the vibration or with mm. the thing that it is that they're trying to attract. That's probably how I attract you guys <laughs> because I, yeah, I want to be um, healthier. <laughs> yeah. And, and you chose to follow, you chose to go live, you've chosen to maybe do some movements. So whatever your intention was, I want to be healthier, I want to be younger, I want to reduce pain, I want to reduce stress, whatever it might be, your intention sent out a beacon, we popped up on your social media through law of attraction, you chose to take action on that attraction, and now here we are. Now what you choose to do moving forward depends on your end result. Like, do, when will you know that you got too younger? When will you know that the pain is gone? When will you know that the stress is not there? Like, what is the end result that you're trying to achieve? And that's the other side of it. Mm -mm. Yeah, it totally okay. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. These are great questions. And, um, you know, you're, you're on the right track because you, you were asking yourself the question, Mm. It's just the time in which you get your answer is the difference. Mm. And, you know, is this the right opportunity for me? And then walk away. Is mm. this the job that I really want? Walk away. Answer is going to come in the shower. <laughs> you know, they always come in the shower. So if you're, you know, or when you're on a walk or when you're in nature, yeah. it just like pops in your head and you're like, I've got it. Yeah, when it's totally unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually, I learned every time I looked for a girlfriend, I never found one. Oh, really? <laughs> no. And when I did, and when I did find one, they were never in alignment with me. It was always the ones that were the most, you know, the most unaligned. Really? But <laughs> when I'm like, I want one, but I'm busy, I'm doing things. I would start working, I would start playing sports or whatever. And then all of a sudden, it would hit me in the head. I would meet them in the middle of the road or like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, and it's like, how did that happen? Like, how come every time I look for one, I can't find one. And every time I just get busy and do my thing, but I send the message out, they, they come. 
it's the most, it's, it's fascinating to me. I've seen it happen constantly in my life with different things. And I just use these little examples as ways to describe my parents. Mm-mm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah. I, I feel much better now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's coming together. The answer will come. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, usually, usually when I set the intention out, by the six month mark, I get my first kind of attractions. Four to six months, I start to see the first seed. Usually the first one is just to give me more clarity for the next one. Mm. And, and because a lot of the time we don't actually know what we want. It's like, I want a house. Well, what does that even mean? Is that, what, well, how do you define a house? It, and does it need to be somewhere? Is it, a, a, do you consider an apartment a house, a townhouse a house? Does it have to be a big house? Is it a cabin? Is it in nature? Is it, you know, so, so there's a lot of clarity that needs to come around that. And, and that's why usually within four to six months, you get the first seed or a piece of information that's really valuable that guides the compass. And by the 10th, 11th, and 12th month is when you know. That's when you're like oh, taking really? action. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and again, it depends. If this is something brand new, it depends on like if you want to create something new like if you're a billionaire and you want a, a house right <laughs> like it takes two seconds one call can you buy me that house yeah. hey, <laughs> right because they built all this manifestation potential they mm-hmm. built the relationships the resources the energy and the network in order to make that happen super quickly but if it's somebody else then you know, and they don't have a home and they, they barely have any savings in their bank account, mm-hmm. then they ask for a house and it's like the universe goes, okay, great. I can, based on my calculations on the actions that you're taking today and your current manifestation potential, it's mm-hmm. going to take you 10 years. <laughs> yeah. However, I'm going to send you an, I'm going to send you an opportunity. I'm mm-hmm. going to send you um, a lottery ticket, which mm-hmm. is going to help you get that house and you're going to have this opportunity. You better take it. And so you get to, you get to the store, you're with your friend, your friend buys a lottery ticket. You decide not to get one. You miss the opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next opportunity. I have a new job for you. That's going to speed up your manifestation. Would you like to take it? You're going to have to work a couple more hours though. Okay. I'll do that. You see, and so we're building that potential over time and then boom, we can create that manifestation. Now, depending on the starting point of the individual can sometimes dictate how long it takes because, or the belief and the actions that they're willing to take in order to get there. So, yeah. 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 It makes a lot of sense um, because I've been wanting to, um, to get serious about my music. I, I make music and I play music. Um, and another reason why I'm wanting to move to a different location is, um, yeah, I feel like I should be in a place where the place itself supports my music, as in making music um, and recording and things like that. Um, but yeah, it, it makes what you were saying makes total sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And also there's different ways. Sometimes people need to have a very clear plan, whereas mm. other people, it happens more organically mm. and you have to know yourself in order to understand which way works best for you. For me, mm. if I just know what I want, all the options show themselves. Whereas for other people, they have to draw out step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And that actually is better for them. So mm-hmm. how we manifest is not the same for everybody. The overall principle of it is the same, but to maximize it, it's different from person mm-hmm. to person. All right. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so for me, I just have to tell you, I'm going to this Island. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like there. I don't know how I'm going to get there. No idea. And then all of a sudden it happens and I'll give an example when I was like 19, 
I knew that we would, I would have a social media following that was massive. Oh, wow. Really? Did you? <laughs> but I had no skills, uh, like relevant to media. I didn't know why I was going to have it or what it was going to be about. Oh, really? Okay. But, but then when I was like 21, I did like, I built my first website, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I just like by myself, I, I started a business. I built, I built my own website. Then I started video logging and I didn't understand why I was doing it, but I started doing it. And that was like, you know, I bought a little camera. I started filming myself and, and then, and then I just started doing all these little things. And it was like, none of it made sense. Like, why was I, why was I building a website? Why was I doing this? Why was I doing that? Really? And then all, it of, a sense sudden, to you at the time. Yeah, then all of a sudden, four years later, uh, oh, sorry, four years ago, um, cause that would have been six years after six months, six years after I had had that intention in my head, mm -hmm. I, uh, I started like all of a sudden all those skills came out. We built the human garage website. I needed to know how mm -hmm. to do that. We created the human garage Instagram. I needed to know how to do that. How do you capture and edit a video? I needed to know how to do that. So I all of a sudden had all the skills necessary to support the manifestation. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And if my brain, if I forced it, and I pushed, for me, it wouldn't have worked. Or if I knew every step along the way, for me, it was just random little skills that I'm getting over time and random actions that I'm taking that make no sense individually. But when you look at it from an overview perspective, it looks, it looks completely planned and completely structured yeah, yeah. and like a master plan. But I, I don't know, I was just doing things, right? I just love learning and I love uh, trying things and building things. And that led to that. So for you, you will know what mm -hmm. system works better for you. And yeah. it may start with, I don't know what you mean by do music, but let's say uh, I'm a pianist, I play the piano, right? If I, okay, I'm gonna uh, record myself playing the piano every day for the next year, mm. just five minutes. And who knows what that would do? Am I going to release those recordings? Am I going to post them? Am I going to share them? Are they going to be professionally recorded or just like on my phone? Am I going to put it on my social media? Am I going to tell people about it? Am I going to, am I doing it to get better? I don't know. Then the next step is maybe I build my website or my Instagram or my account that showcases me playing and I go live. I go live every Monday and I play, you know, and I've committed to that. I've put it in my calendar. It's, it's a dedicated time for me to do that. I might not get it perfect, but when are we measuring perfect? Is it today or is it in 10 years? If I do that every, every year for 10 years, eventually, no matter what, it's like, I'm probably going to be successful at it. Yeah. So, well, yeah. in 10 years, I'll be like 55. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's a manifestation year. <laughs> is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, so think about it. Ask yourself the questions and the answers will come. Um, write, write out like a rough vision or idea of what it is that you want to create. And, yeah. and I want you to just think of one or two actions that you can take every day or every other day or every week and put it in your calendar that will help you get to that. Yeah. So it might be just every Monday you, you play and you play for you. That could be, it could be as simple as that. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do go live on Instagram every week, but oh, I perfect. don't, yeah, I don't really play for myself. I mean, I don't make time mm. to play for myself. That's a nice one. <laughs> well, what I used to do with classes was I would do it for me. Mm. You can participate in my class for me. <laughs> so, and, and that's the way to always do it. Um, you know, when I would do Instagram lives, I would show up for me. I'm going to do the maneuvers that help my body today based on what I need and everybody else can participate. And by default, they will get the best experience because I'm having the best experience leading the class. Mm -hmm. If, if your teacher's not having a good time, it's pretty hard for the student to have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because you feel it, like their passion and their 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 energy, and it it translates. So 
if you're having a great time playing for you, then all of a sudden people are going to feel that. They feel, not only do they hear your music, but they feel you. Like when you listen to a really emotional or emotionally connected artists, you can feel it in your bones. Yeah, yeah. When they sing or when they play, or even in the music that they create, it's like, whoa, like you can feel that viscerally. That's because that's how they're feeling. They're doing it for them. They're either releasing their emotions or showing you their emotions and how they feel through their art. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's something I've kind of been, not struggling, but um, yeah, I've been wondering about that because whenever I play, like whenever I improvise and it's just like, it comes out very naturally and it feels good. And I'm sort of like singing and playing for myself. I know that that's when it's most like pure and powerful and most energetic. But I feel like, well, I have this vision of um, playing at outdoor festivals. And I feel like it's my mission to spread light through my music, which means I have a feeling, I mean, I kind of think that I should make songs which people can, you know, understand and relate to. And the music that I, that comes out when I improvise is quite abstract. And so I'm not really sure, like, I don't know. Um, sorry, I, I'm kind of getting off topic. No, no, I, I can, one, I can feel your emotions when you talk about it. And that emotion is the same emotion I want you to play with. And then the other thing is like kids are brilliant at this. They, they do fantasy and role play and make believe. So, you know, Maxine, she'll like come over and she's like, let me take your order. And then she has her little pen, you know, on her hand. And she's like, what would you like to eat? And then she writes it down. Right. And then she goes over, she grabs like a cup and she brings over an empty plate and she's like, here's your food. And she enacts being a waitress. And then all of a sudden we go to a retreat and they have a full team of chefs and staffs mm -hmm. and staff and cooks and stuff like that. And she's helping order and like put plates away and organize oh. people and she's managing the kitchen. Mm -mm -mm. She's telling them what to make and how much and, you know, making sure everybody has what they need because she was enacting that. And so why I'm bringing that up, mm -hmm. if you envision yourself at festivals playing in the parks or whatever, go play in the park by yourself and just make believe or, or go to an event that only has five people, you know, just get yourself in that energy, in that experience, okay. make believe as if it's true. And that will give you the, the confidence and the belief. Then, mm -hmm. then you're actually law of attracting faster because you're putting out a beacon that you already have it. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we might get cut off here, by the way. Uh, there's a class starting in one minute with Denise. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so and much, Jason. And I, uh, yeah, I really appreciate what you guys do. Thank you so much. Please play for you. Have fun with it. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing what comes out of this. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, bye. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm going to get kicked off here. There's a class starting in about a minute. Um, if you haven't already, we've got an autoimmune class on December 17th, Sunday, online, Zoom. If you have autoimmune, gas, bloating, distension, racing thoughts, any of that stuff, you can join that class. We're going to do a bit of a workshop, actually, where we'll show you the maneuvers for autoimmune, what supplements to take, talk about chemicals in the environment. Mm -hmm.